Here's something that's easy to forget. Websites are mostly text. And that's why typography is the most important design element on a website. Typography is the secret behind beautiful websites. Take a look at Kinfolk's website. They have nice photos, but the typography is what holds it all together. So it makes it feel unified. Same thing with Houdinki. The typography gives the design an elegant unity. It's perfect for a high-end brand. It's easy to lose the forest for the trees with typography, but in the end, it's really just about the clean presentation of information. What I want to do in this video is share nine typography mistakes and explain how you can avoid them. Number one, don't make text low contrast. Low contrast text is one of the first mistakes amateur designers make. I used to do it all the time. And I think I did it because the designs felt too loud, but over time I've learned that low contrast text is rarely the solution. If you look at any well-designed website, you'll notice very little low contrast text. For example, notice how all the text pops on Apple's homepage. It's all high contrast. Same thing with stripe.com. There's no low contrast text. Everything is clear. Mistake number two, letting paragraphs get too wide. Paragraphs should be between 40 to 70 characters per line. Paragraphs start to look strange as they get too wide and, and worse still, they get more confusing for the reader to jump from line to line. Wikipedia is an example of a high profile website that makes this mistake. Mistake number three, not giving the body text line spacing. The line spacing of body text is important. You don't want your body text to feel cramped. It doesn't look inviting to readers. Instead, give your body text some line spacing so that it doesn't feel so dense. Typically one and a half times the font size is an appropriate amount of line spacing. Mistake number four, not making the text scannable. Most people don't read websites, they scan websites. So presenting walls of indistinguishable text is usually ignored. Italics, quotes, and bold formatting help people know where to dive in and out of paragraphs. Mistake number five, making body text too small. Uh, it's probably becoming clear that body text is the most important typographical element. A good font size is between 15 to 20 pixels, but every font is, is a little bit different, so it's hard to, to give an exact number. When in doubt, check websites like medium.com or the New York Times to see how big their body text is. Number six, don't use overly decorative fonts. Take a look at these fonts. How quickly can you read them? Because here's the thing, above everything else, text is meant to be read. So don't use fonts that make reading difficult. Number seven, avoid core fonts. Let me do a little history lesson. Back in 1996, Microsoft distributed free core fonts for the web. You've probably heard of some of these fonts. Microsoft did this so that web designers could use these fonts confidently and for a long time, websites only used these nine fonts. Then about 10 years ago, something big happened in web typography. We got web fonts and web fonts started to replace core fonts. Basically web fonts let designers use any font they want to. It's much better. And because we spent years looking at core fonts on old websites, these core fonts have an outdated feel that you should probably avoid. Number eight, don't use more than two web fonts. So web fonts are awesome, but your website has to load them and more than two web fonts will likely to start to cause a performance problem. If for some crazy reason you do need more than two web fonts, just use an image instead. Number nine, don't try to combine two different fonts or you can, but just know that it's tricky to get right. Find one font with many different weights that you can use to distinguish headings from paragraphs. When in doubt, choose a popular font like Meriwether, Roboto, Gotham, Proxima Nova, or Open Sans. Popular fonts are popular for a reason. Finally, I wanna conclude with a few shout outs to tools that can help you choose colors for your fonts. I find choosing colors is pretty tricky, so I lean heavily on these tools. My favorite is something called Material UI. It's a palette that I use for almost all of my websites. But if you want a more unique palette, you can check out colorlovers.com or Adobe Colors. 
both have plenty of different palettes to choose from. I hope that was helpful. Maybe let me know in the comments if you have any questions. Check out my other videos for more tips on creating websites. Thanks for watching.